Well, good evening, ladies, lasses and lasses. Welcome to the click. You smell astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, especially you, Drew. If there is one smell that just rises above the rest, it is your smell, Drew. And I mean that in the best possible way. Oh, yes, indeed. By the way, uh, today we're doing some r slash truth off my chest, which is amazing. Probably just going to be a bunch of posts talking about the demon apocalypse after the demon comes out. Yes, little boy. But for now, it's other dramatic stories. Enjoy. Mwah. Okay, here we go, baby. Oh, yes. My girlfriend refused to let her terminally ill ex see his dog, so I took it to him. My girlfriend kept the dog that her and her ex had after they broke up. It's originally his, and he tried to get it back, but she wouldn't let him. I heard he stopped trying to get it back after a while because he got sick. It's been months now. I heard that her ex was very sick and had sent his relatives to try to tell my girlfriend to let him see the dog, but she refused and threatened to call the cops on them. I found this so cruel of her, especially since it's originally his dog, so that was unnecessary cruel and unsympathetic. Despite not being a huge fan of dogs, I put it in my car, contacted a guy, her ex, and went over to his mother's house to let him see the dog. He cried when he saw the dog and spent two hours with it before I took it back. He was so appreciative, though I only did this because of him being human. I know if I was in his place, I would want someone to help me see my beloved pet when my ex keeps refusing for no reason other than being bitter and petty. The guy passed away days ago. Thinking about it, I feel relieved that I did what I did, although I cannot tell anyone. She doesn't know that I drove the dog to her ex that day while she was at work. That is so cruel. Why would you do that? I mean, we don't know anything about how the relationship ended, but still, if it is their pet to begin with, and is this kind of situation in this series, why wouldn't you let them? I mean, petty breakups aside, life and death and last wishes seems to kind of trump petty breakups, right? Right? Am I the only one who feels like that's the equation? My ex had a dog when we broke up. We'd been together for over five years, so emotionally the dog was mine too. But I would never consider taking the dog from him. That's monstrous. I would never date anyone that did that either. Whatever you do, don't get another dog with this person. Yeah, or like, kids. That's even worse. Like, <laughs> god, this is just a pet. Imagine if it's a human being. Oh, no. This was my main takeaway from this post. Unless the dog was being abused, then what the frick? My ex and I got a dog while we were still together. These days we share the dog like divorced parents share custody of a child. She's still spoiled, loved, and cherished by both of us. Yeah, unless the dog was abused, which so far it doesn't sound like it, then I would seriously question being with this girl. Me too, this sounds like the kind of thing where they might treat you okay, but it sounds like the kind of person who turns around the moment they don't get what they want, or there's a breakup, or you have to go separate ways, and anyone who's outside of their immediate active circle is the enemy, if that is an ex or anything. Don't get me wrong, you don't have to be best friends with your ex like you broke up for a reason, but being this petty and destructive when they're literally on their deathbed, I don't know, man. It doesn't bode well for the future when, when stuff might hit the fan, you know? Yeesh. I can hear my neighbor talk to his cat. Every day when my neighbor comes home from work, he unlocks his door and says, Hello, Kevin! And Kevin the cat meows back in greeting. Our apartment building is small, so I can hear nearly everything that happens in the communal hallways in my living room. I don't know my neighbor at all, not even his name, but I know his cat. My neighbor also likes to smoke a lot of weed. No shame, I like to indulge too, just not every day. I work from home and live alone, but hearing, Hello, Kevin! has become a part of my routine. It makes me smile every time. Yesterday, I heard the normal, Hello, Kevin! greeting and Kevin's meow. I later smelled the blunt he smoked. Then I heard him go into the laundry room and came back. But then, I heard something odd. Kevin's meowing was super loud, and he sounded pissed. I waited a little while, but Kevin persisted. I opened up my door and saw Kevin outside the neighbor's door. He was practically screaming and jumping to hit the door with his little paws. Inside the apartment, I heard my neighbor echoing Kevin's cries. My neighbor sounded frantic and desperate, calling, Kevin? Over and over again. I walked up to the door and knocked. I heard my neighbor pause, then quietly, with amazement and perhaps fear, repeat, Kevin? At last minute, I decided to dart back to my apartment and softly close the door, listening while my neighbor let Kevin in. He whispered, How did you do that, Kevin? I've been laughing to myself about it since it happened. Imagine my stoned out of his mind neighbor contemplating how his cat human knocked on his door. <laughs> That is so funny and so sweet. Oh my god. 
honestly, with the internet being what it is, this is what pranking should be, right? Wholesome little things that just gives you amazing images in your head, but doesn't actually hurt anyone and kind of plays into something lovable that is already there. This is beautiful. My girlfriend just gave birth to her first child. I know I am not the biological father and revealed I knew as soon as she gave birth. Oh, this is the, the, the freaking roller coaster. It's always like some wholesome cat post and then it's like the family just exploded post. The, the, there is no in between. I'll try to keep this short because I'm planning to go to a bar soon. I found out when she was about six months along. The guy, Brian, approached me at work. Are you Sarah's boyfriend? I said yeah and asked what he wanted. He said he was sorry that he had slept with her and swore he didn't know that she was with someone. I don't believe that. He then pulled out his phone and showed the text between them. They had also been sleeping together or linking up for at least a year? God! Oh, yeah, that's kind of sus. I mean, you, you can't, I mean, may, maybe they were really casual about it, who knows, but he doesn't sound like it. She then found out she was pregnant, and they came to an agreement to just pretend the baby was mine. In return, she wouldn't lose her perfect life, and he wouldn't be responsible for a baby. What can... What kind of, like, drama show play BS is this? Oh my god. Hey, we just tricked this guy into thinking it's his child, so I don't have to be a father and just dodge all my responsibilities, and you don't have to, you know, freaking be responsible for your mess-ups and literally cheating for, like, a year straight. It's not even one of those one times, like, oh my god, it was dark, I slipped on a sock, and we accidentally did the naughtiest. It's like, no, this is for a year. Consistent. I knew it was weird. We had been having problems trying for a baby, and all of a sudden she got prego so easily. But he explained that he had been thinking about it and he recently became a Christian. He said that he couldn't live his life knowing that I was living a lie, while his child didn't know their real father. So, yeah, I told him I'd keep in touch, and not to say that he said anything just yet. I've had a lot of time to think, but ultimately I decided to wait until she gave birth to hurt her in her most vulnerable moment. This is... <laughs> Is it just me, or do some people, like, do not get over the flair of, like, high school drama? It makes sense now why movies about high school drama still do so incredibly well, even most of the population in the world is not in high school. God damn. I'll spare the details, but she went into labor, baby was born, and was taken to the NICU to be monitored for a bit. What should have been a beautiful moment of me holding my baby was the most heartbreaking time of my life. Just knowing he was not mine hurt me. Once she was sewn up and comfortable, I started packing my stuff to leave. She asked where I was going, and I just told her. I know I'm not baby's name's father. You can act all shocked, but I know. Just ask Brian to come. I'm positive he'll sign the birth certificate. Then I left. She's been calling my phone over and over, even sending texts as I type this, and has even gotten her sister to call me a few times. It was really hard pretending these last few months, but I think I'm satisfied. I feel really heartbroken, though. I was planning to propose to her on the day our baby was born. Oh, dear God. I mean, I suppose those plans were thrown out the window quite a while ago, but yeah. Talk about thinking your life is heading in one direction, and it just turns out to be the complete opposite. My God, what a, what a 180. Small update, Brian is going to be in the baby's life if it's his. I don't care what anyone says. I'm sure the kid isn't mine. I'll go get tested, but me and Brian have been in contact since last night and there isn't any doubt in my mind. For those of you calling me a psychopath or whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> You'll forget about this post in a day anyway, and will I have to live with this shite for the rest of my life. What I did wasn't amazing, but I don't care. All I ever did was treat her amazing, and this is how she pays me back. If you think this is fake, go read something else. It doesn't matter to me. Oh my god. I'm just impressed you spend that many months after finding out they were already cheating, and the child already wasn't yours. I think I would just have broken up on the spot if I was that sure about it. You know, staying with it for months and months at a time... I don't know, maybe maybe the payback is sweet, so to say, but uh, I think I would just want to move on with my life as fast as possible. But uh, this is really shitty, and the whole plan to like lie about it, let someone raise a kid that isn't their own, and have no way of knowing it, and everyone else is in on it, th this is some Truman Show shite. Dear God, I did a sigh of relief when I saw you're not married to this woman. Take power from that. You can move on much easily. That is true. Yeah, so glad marriage is not part of this. That would have been so much more complicated. Holy crap. Because essentially without a marriage, this is just a normal breakup, I suppose, with a, <laughs> with a few, a, a lot of spice added, but still. My cousin's gift ruined Christmas and possibly my relationship. I come from a big family. Our holidays involve extended family like second cousins, etc. My fiancé and I are in our mid-twenties and there are a lot of cousins in their twenties and thirties. Last night we had our big Christmas party. It was fun to 
see everyone until it was time to exchange presents. My cousin Anna, not a real name, hands out pink envelopes to all the 20s and 30s men who have married slash dated into the family. My fiancé received one and quickly put it in his pocket after opening it. I was distracted opening my gifts and didn't ask to look at it. About 20 minutes later, my cousin Rachel, again, not a real name, pulls me aside and says Anna is giving out cards with instructions on how to get a discount subscription to her OnlyFans. <laughs> I mean, online creator marketing and all that kind of stuff, but like, <laughs> there is a time and a place. Family Christmas to like your siblings and cousins, significant others. Holy sh! Rachel's BF got one of the pink cards and showed Rachel because he was weirded out. I am pissed at this point because I suspect my fiancé's card also has an OnlyFans discount. So I asked to talk with him and he denies getting a card from Anna. I tell him, I saw her hand you one and I watched you put it in your pocket. I go to grab his pocket and he suddenly remembers getting a card but claims he didn't open it. I take it from him and of course it's already open. And of course it's about freaking OnlyFans. I go back inside to confront Anna and find her already arguing with a different cousin who is upset because her husband has already tried looking at Anna's page. What a freaking homewrecker! Oh my... <laughs> I mean, also, kind of like on the husband, if someone approaches you like this, and you are in a relationship you believe in, then just don't do it! You know, it's like both parties are being so silly. Anna claims she's just trying to get her business off the ground, and no one appreciates all the hard work and skills it takes to be a successful in a digital career. I mean, maybe this is not the way to go about it, you know? <laughs> She says her gift is not sexual, it's just marketing. Yeah, yeah, here is my OnlyFans page. Trust me, it's not sexual. Wink. Sure, that's that's the excuse we're running with. All right. Some of the older relatives, aunt and uncles, are starting to take sides too, but they're mostly really confused about what's going on. Anna's mom started crying because of something I said, and my mom tried to get me to apologize, which pissed me off more. At this point, I leave with my brother and his husband, because I don't want to spend the night with my fiancé at home, and I don't feel like going with parents when my mom is pressuring me to apologize. Oh, and surprise, surprise, Anna didn't give my brother's husband the card, so make of that what you will about the intent behind her gift. Sounds a bit like a double whammy, you know? I mean, obviously, I suppose a gay man wouldn't be interested in her OnlyFans in the first place, but it was truly about only marketing and getting your business off the ground. You would just have given it to everyone because it's like, oh, here it is. You know, you can do what you will with this kind of thing. It's like a silly thing. I'm just doing an online career kind of do. Take a look if you like. You know, then you could argue that it's non-sexual or whatever. But the fact that you gave it to only the people who married into the family and only the people you know who would potentially be intrigued of, of it in an intimate way and and also give it to the people who are in relationships with your family members. It's like, it's so many layers of, no, no, this is like five different ulterior motives all stacked in one. Come on now. I'm seriously considering calling off the engagement over this. I am pissed at my cousin for ruining both Christmas and my relationship. I'm gonna be honest about it. It's Both parties were in the wrong. Both are acting really weird. But if your romantic partner is so easily baited by an OnlyFans discount code, I'm not so sure if I would trust them that deeply anyway. Like, I don't know anything else of the context. Maybe he got so incredibly uncomfortable. Maybe he's super scared of conflicts. So he was trying to hide it. I don't know. But from what it looks like, it's like, yeah, that, mm, that sounds a bit unreliable, doesn't it? Rachel's boyfriend is a true hero here. Opie's mother needs a gosh darn reality check. Doubt she'd be thrilled if a young family member handed her husband a link to her naked butt pictures. <laughs> Which is exactly what this is. I don't even understand why she would defend this. I have a mom that even if it doesn't make any sense, will always side against me. Maybe OP is in a similar parental situation. Oh yeah, family bias is a real freaking thing, my god. I've heard about like, really wacky family Christmas stories, but I think this is easily in the top three. Easily in the top three. Oh my god. My wife pretended to be me and did my work while I was sick. We're both software engineers and working from home, which is why this was even possible to pull off in the first place. I am a full stack developer, while she's a front end developer, but she pretty much has all the knowledge she needs to do the same work as I do. She would sometimes sit with me when I would work and help me debug lines and lines of code, which I appreciate a lot and I do the same in return when I can. But today, she really surprised me. So, I caught a nasty cold last night and I didn't take a sick day off because my team and I have a lot of pressure from our boss to complete our current project as soon as possible. I told my wife this and she told me just to focus on getting better and she would handle the rest. 
I should mention that her job doesn't require her to work at any particular time. She's just giving a task or two to complete and then she is efficient. She would finish within a couple of hours and be free for the rest of the day. Today she was free all morning, so she locked herself in my office and started doing my work. She made an excuse in my team's group chat pretending to be me, saying I lost my voice so I can't hop on voice call, and they fell for it. <laughs> this is amazing! Oh my god! She made me breakfast and told me I couldn't come into the office for the rest of the workday, so here I am lounging on my sofa with a wet cloth on my forehead, a box of tissues next to me, and the biggest freaking smile on my face. I took an index card and wrote, free workday pass on it, and gave it to my wife in return for helping me out today. I also plan to treat her to a nice dinner once I'm not sick out of my mind. Thank you for all the nice comments. This is so sweet. Oh my god. This is what I love about these posts. They're really going between, here is our family Christmas that blew up with OnlyFans, and here is our beautiful relationship where we literally help out each other when we're sick with our actual work. This is so beautiful. My god, it gives me both like the drama spice of humanity and also all the hope I could ever wish for. Ah, <sighs> isn't that right, emotional support demon? Oh yes, indeed. Where do I apply for a spouse like this? But but seriously, she is awesome. She is the freaking best for sure. If I have ever seen relationship goals, like, poof. Amazing. My wife stole our daughter's college money to fund her shopping addiction and wants me to take the blame. Oh, here we are again. It's a roller coaster. It's so perfect. It's literally every other post. It's just, oh, it's so nice. We're helping each other. Neighbors, cats smoking weed. And then it's just like, hup, de, de, de. finances and family blowing up. I am stuck in between a rock and a hard place, and I don't know what to do. And the problem is, I can't discuss this with anyone I'm close to for privacy reasons. I've been with my wife Andrea, 48F, and my stepdaughter Cassie, 17F, for 8 years now. I love them both to death. But Cassie is a brilliant young woman. Recognizing her potential, me and Andrea decided to put together a college fund for Cassie, so she wouldn't be crushed by debt. Over the years, it has amounted to over $200,000. That is a really impressive savings account. God damn. Cassie is aware of this and is banking on it since she's trying to get into the Ivy League. To make a long story short, last week I found out that almost $170,000 of the money was missing from the account. And there's a bit of a difference between 30k and 200k if you're, if you're going for college in the US. That's... Ugh. I freaked the freak out and asked Andrea if she knew anything about it. She teared up and said that she had been spending the money over the years to fund her spending habit. I was furious, but I had a moment of clarity. I browsed these subs enough to know that an affair was possible, so I asked her if she was having one. She adamantly denied it and offered any proof I needed. Social media accounts, email, her work phone, everything. She offered to show me the receipts as well. There was nothing that popped out as suspicious, but the math from the receipts added up as well, so I let it go. But we still had the major problem of the money being gone. I mean, she can be an addict with a serious problem that she takes out on the family without cheating being part of the equation. But, you know, you can also have a, just a second phone that you hide, that you do that kind of stuff with. So, eh, it's not like guaranteed, but, uh, but I also wouldn't be surprised if she just has this problem, because that's kind of bad enough. She described herself as a shopping addict, and the money from Cassie's account was just too tempting not to use. She didn't make excuses, but offered no solutions. But wait, where did all this stuff go, though? Like, I I'm assuming you lived together. Like, wouldn't you have noticed she came home with $170,000 of merchandise? Like, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. Unless you buy, like, you know, a gold-plated Gucci bag that takes up this much space. This is a lot of stuff. It's a shitload of stuff. As stated before, I was beyond furious. She ruined Cassie's chances of going to college debt three and has changed the trajectory of her whole life. I had asked her to stay with her sister while I tried to figure this out. Cassie was concerned about why she was leaving, but we just said we needed a little bit of space. I asked Andrea to come back home yesterday and we had an extremely long discussion about how to handle this. She stopped me from talking and asked a favor of me. She asked if I could take the fall for her. For context, her and Cassie don't get along for a variety of reasons. And knowing how independent and Cassie is, she will probably leave right after college, if not during. In fact, me and Cassie get along very well, and she comes to me with a lot of her issues. Andrea fears this will permanently drive Cassie away and she doesn't want to lose her. Oh gee, a parent that you're already on shaky ground with is now wanting the other parent to take the fall for literally stealing the entire college fund and messing up the entire career trajectory and how much debt you have to deal with as a kid because your addiction and you wouldn't talk- Yeah, I wonder why they would want to separate from them, oh my god. 
I told her that before we even talk about that, she needed to acknowledge her mistake and own it. She needed to go to individual therapy, she needed couples counseling, she needed to find a sophiolic support group so we can be controlling the finances from now on. She said those terms were steep but fair. I said she needed to tell Cassie what she did, apologize and hope for the best. She refused and said she could never lose Cassie. She said I would survive the mistake, but she couldn't. I told her that in order to even consider me taking the fall, she needs to agree to my terms. I don't know what the hell to do. The last thing I want to do is lie to Cassie, but I don't want Andrea and Cassie to split up forever. And the worst part about this whole thing is that Cassie's life is ruined either way. And I don't know how to replenish the money other than maybe borrowing from my 401k. Reddit, do you have any suggestions? Divorce is always an option, but I love Andrea despite her mistakes and me dating at age 52 is next to impossible. Edit. After everyone here has knocked some sense into me, I realize I can't lie to Cassie. I love her too much and she deserves the absolute truth no matter how ugly and hard it is. I'll be talking to Andrea and telling her we need to tell her the truth together as a condition of us staying together, or else I would initiate divorce proceedings and tell Cassie anyway. Also, as someone suggested, I don't need her trying to flip the script on me, so I'll record our interaction going forward. Jesus, yeah, I was just about to say, do not lie to to the kid because that will most likely come out sooner or later anyway because the likelihood of this person rebouncing at some point into their addiction is quite high and this is gonna come out sooner or later anyway most likely and then it's gonna turn out that she not only took the entire fund she also made you lie about it and now you're both liars you know this is not a solution um this individual andrea needs to really own up to it get some help and never ever 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 be in control of like joint finances ever again jesus christ addictions are horrible but it's no excuse to take it out on other people's lives like this and especially to this extent it's absolutely bonkers i'm still surprised how like that was hidden spending 170k on merchandise how doesn't that show up or maybe it was over a very long period of time Maybe this was over the over the span of 10 years or something, I don't know. Edit 2. I want to thank everyone here for really opening my eyes. You're right. I need to put Cassie first, and like I said, I'll be telling the absolute truth. Even if she gets mad at me and disowns me, at least I'll know I did the right thing. In addition, I'm going to pay for her college myself. I can pull money from a couple of places such as my retirement and inheritance, it will be okay. If I have to live a little frugally during retirement and work a few extra years, then so be it. Cassie is worth it. I honestly doubt her mother is going to sell her stuff, so that's why I'm taking this route. She still has this stuff? And she's still not willing to part with it to fix the issue she caused? I'm gonna say though, you're a real parent. Like this is, you're willing to actually sacrifice your own stuff your own retirement and working extra years just to repair this for your child that you have taken responsibility for. That is amazing. That is incredibly admirable. I am still astounded that the mother is not willing to just, oh, you know what? I don't need these 50 Gucci bags for $200,000. I can just sell that because obviously my child's college is more important. I am astounded that that is not happening absolutely insane especially after they've already admitted that this is a problem like it's obviously stuff you don't need i'm assuming as for andrea i've been criticized for wanting to let andrea off the hook so to speak but it isn't easy to say when really deep feelings aren't involved that being said i don't think i can stay with her what she did is horrendous and she ruined our daughter's future for her addiction we've had a long discussion late last night and i threatened divorce unless she told cassie the truth she begged me not to do it, but I put my foot down and eventually she agreed, but only if I agreed not to divorce and I helped her repair the relationship. I likely won't be doing either. She made her bed so she can sleep in it. That is probably the best course of action, because being an understandable person, being compassionate doesn't always mean letting people off the hook, especially when it's hurting other people around you. You cannot make everyone happy, especially when one of them is a raging addict like this. And most likely having joint finances like this that she can secretly pull from is also kind of enabling it. Um, it's not helping anyone to be to not be firm about it. But I hope it turns out well. I'm really glad to hear that uh, the young individual in question still has someone supporting her and hopefully goes through life without have being too heavily in debt because of her mother's actions. Um, I wish you the best. That is really admirable. If you sleep with someone without telling your partner, you are not discovering that you're poly, you're just cheating. I, 27M, had a three-week fling with a 22F, basically inseparable for that time. During a deep, heartfelt conversation, she told me that she wants to come out as poly. That's when she told me she had a finance stationed in Japan. Wait, hold on. That's, that's not how you do it. You come, you come out during the dating phase when you're not locked down with a single person and being like, damn, I realized I really want to pursue this with both people. Or you talk with your partner you already have and be like, hey, I might want to open this up. How do you feel about it? Like, it's not like, hey, by the way, I have a fiance and I'm kind of cheating right now, but, but uh, uh.
Oh, that's not how... No, no. It's not a sexual orientation to cheat on someone. It's also not okay to get involved with someone and not let them know you're in a relationship. Yeah, that's also... That's also kind of shady. Edit. I've seen a few comments saying, tell the fiancé. Well, I didn't have to. She did. She came out as Polly to him. I heard from her friend that they are still together, but apparently did not take it well. These comments are wild. <laughs> Read them before they delete them. A fiancé? I picture the moment when the two of you are talking and you say, pass me the salt, please. And she goes, sure. Uh, oh, by the way, I have a fiancé in Japan. Have me the mustard, please. Oh, boy. More so cuddling in bed. It's cold and talking about what we want of the future. Talking about life together. And then, oh, by the way, I have a fiancé in Marines. Please don't hate <laughs> me. I want to say, though, this just sets an absolutely terrible precedent, both for polyamorous people, because stuff like this just gets conflated. It's like, oh, it's only an excuse for cheating, which is horrible. It's a horrible precedent. And also for the partners who now have to accept that their partner is cheating, even though that was never discussed with them or brought up as terms for the relationship initially. And now they have to go along with it because otherwise they're disrespectful of someone else's preferences that didn't actually agree to it. Like... What? The thing is that the difference with this, what, that I think is a pretty healthy line to draw, is that one is not excluding of the other, but of what counts as cheating in a relationship is whatever you guys agreed is cheating. If you guys entered a relationship agreeing that, yeah, we're exclusive, we're fiancés, we're gonna do this, just the two of us, then being with someone else is cheating. If you go and cheat with someone else and then like, oh, I might be polyamorous, that is still cheating on the relationship. You have to set that standard before taking that action by yourself. It doesn't make it not cheating. That's not to say that polyamory isn't valid. It definitely is, but this is not the way to do it. If you really want to come out with it, you talk to your partner first. Like this just sounds like, oh, I cheated, but it's still kind of fun to do this without consequences. I'm just going to use this label as an excuse. That's just what it sounds like to me, or it's a really toxic way of applying it. Either way, it just sets a horrible precedent, in my opinion, because it also means that polyamorous people just gets labeled as cheaters, and that's not the conclusion either. It's like, this is, this is just nasty from every angle. My girlfriend was acting like a smartass, so I made her cry and apologize to me and said she learned this from TikTok. <laughs> Oh no, it's one of these things. They're sassy relationship advice from TikTok. Ladies, to get your man to be super into you, I'll, I'll just do all these toxic things. Tips from a single person on TikTok who's never dated more than two months. Great. I, 25F, and my girlfriend, 24F, are dating for seven months. She is the sweetest girl and is my dream girl. But last month, she kept sending me I love you and you're my world messages. Then the next day, ignores me. She says, let's spend the night together, and I tell her to give me a few minutes, and then she ignores me when I make time for her. I work as an engineer and trying to run a business, so I'm really busy with life, but I still make as much time as I could with her. I always spend the night with her watching movies or sleeping on video calls with her. I try out her hobbies to make her feel like I'm with her in everything. Learn cooking with her and try to play games that are her types we can play together. I barely sleep, just focus on her and my work. But that's fine, really. I am happy. Last week, I sent her a message and she ignored me. I sent her a message asking why she's ignoring me and she answered, Did I ignore you? Or did you send me a message not worth replying to? And I lost it after that and told her, you're right, ignore me more. Next day, she sent me a good morning message and I ignored it. She asked me why I didn't reply back to her and I said, oh, did I not reply? Or was your message not worth replying to? Yeah, this sounds like TikTok in a nutshell. Freaking relationship freaking games I wouldn't expect anyone over the age of 14 to play. My god. She got pissed and said don't talk to me. I should mention my girl is the type to say don't talk to me and then gets mad when I don't talk to her. So we argue and she says that. I sit her down or call her and try to fix like normal people because I don't have time for drama. But this time I ignored her. So after a few hours she texted me asking why I didn't call her and just ignore her. I replied with, did I ignore you or just wasn't worth talking to you about this? She got pissed even more and went to sleep saying, you made me cry, hope you're happy, and I ignored it again. The next day she woke up and started texting me paragraphs of how bad of a boyfriend I am and I ignored it again. We didn't talk for that whole day because she knows I'm gonna answer her with. At that time, I was planning to text her the next day sweet stuff like I love you a lot, but the next day ignore her again like she was doing. I'm, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to believe the ages mentioned in this post. Like, scrape off 10 years. <laughs> you know this? <laughs> But she decided to grow up a little bit and text me and apologize. I was in the middle of work at the time, but she said she's really sorry and wants to talk about what she did and fix it. So I left for an early break to talk to her on the phone. She said she saw multiple videos on TikTok saying stuff like, Do you want him to love you more? Text him sweet things one day and next day ignore him. Or, when he says, why did you ignore, tell him, did I ignore you, or is your message not worth replying to? And shite like that, and girls in the comments saying, ha ha ha, my boyfriend love me more after this. Yeah, if you're 15 and just being manipulated by someone's emotions, no one above a certain age is gonna fall for this bullshit. This 
is a manipulation strategy that works if the person you're doing it to is already very much into you and is kind of young and naive. That's the only time this will work. This is not something you build a foundation on. It's just like playing with someone's chemistry that is already there. I laughed at her so hard people around me thought I am crazy. I explained to her how much of an idiot she is for thinking this would ever work in a relationship and she apologized again. I accepted her apology because it's really nothing big, just wanted her to know what she's doing. I asked her why she would do this anyway. I asked her if she feels like I'm ignoring her or not giving her enough attention or stuff like that. And she said no, just wanted to feel some drama in the relationship. Life is too good, so I create issues where there are none. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, you know, at least three red flags here. No, dear God. I told her how I was planning to text her a lot the next day and ignore her the day after. And she said she kept crying the whole night when I used her drama against her. I asked her if she wants more drama and she said no. So I guess she learned a lesson. Also, to the people who post videos encouraging people to ignore their partners and poo like that, from the bottom of my heart, frick you. You're ruining relationships with this stuff. And then people are calling it immature in the comments. <laughs> Did you say She's 14. <laughs> That's how it comes off, isn't it? Oh my god. I mean, to be fair though, I have met a, a reasonable amount of people who are surprisingly immature even for being old. It's like certain people just don't grow past that early high school drama vibes. It's kind of fascinating. But yeah, don't take dating advice from TikTok. Dear god, and manipulation stuff like this. Like I said, this can work, but it works if someone is young naive, already kind of into you, and you already have sort of, sort of say, the upper hand of the emotional aspect to it. It works if they like you at least as much or possibly more than you like them. But it's a horrible thing to do. This is basically like leading someone on, but on steroids. It's, uh, it's really nasty. That is if it even works. I mean, in most cases, the relationship would just probably suffer from it, which which it should if you do something like this. Jesus, I'm bored in a relationship. I want to stir up drama, so I'm just going to randomly ignore my partner for no reason. Yeah, wow, just the person you wanna you wanna go through life with and face challenges with together, isn't it? Nice. My 19-year-old daughter just called me to tell me she wasn't sober and shouldn't drive home. I am so proud. I would have driven wasted or gotten into a car with a drunk driver before I even considered calling my parents. I have told them their whole lives, and especially once they started driving, that they could call me anytime. No anger, no punishment, no judgment. I am just so glad she did. This shows a really beautiful relationship. I mean, where I come from, this wouldn't even be an issue, because in Sweden you go out to the pub at the age of 18, you know, so being 19, going out to partying and being like, hey, I'm, I'm drunk, I shouldn't be driving home, would be a perfectly normal conversation. But even if you are below the age of drinking, where you happen to live, this proves that it's such a nice relationship that is so open. Because a lot of kids were desperately hide stuff like this, even if the consequences are much, much bigger. It's like, oh, on one hand, getting getting yelled at a bit by a parent for being stupid and drinking versus uh, maybe killing myself in a car crash. It's like, so many kids will desperately try to hide it when, when obviously, you know, this is the way to go about it. And it's so nice that that kind of relationship has been fostered. I wish more people uh, aspired to be this because this is really the best way to be with your family, honestly. Everyone messes up and don't make them mess up more trying to cover up the first smaller mess up. My girlfriend is accusing me of being gay because I didn't cheat on her. Mm-hmm, fellas, is it gay not to cheat? Oh, let's find out together. So we've been together for about two years now. She's always been the jealous type, but it's never bothered me because I'm not a very social person, so I never felt she would have any reason to be jealous. She knows my schedule, and I have the Life360 app on my phone, so she knows my location at all times. I have this app because one day my father got into a car accident in a remote area and it saved his life. According to my girlfriend, women often hit on me. I really don't believe that is the case because I'm an average looking dude and I don't put myself out like that. But she insists this is the case. She has made multiple attempts to catfish me. She tried Facebook, but I won't accept a friend request or message from someone I don't know. She tried Instagram and it was the same. So then she tried Reddit, where I'm likely to respond to a message from a stranger. It was painfully obvious what she was trying to do. I've been using Reddit for a decade and I know what normal behavior looks like. She sent me a message like, I saw your post and it was so funny. Do you want to hook up? I live in your city. <laughs> it's a little bit on the nose for being a catfish, right? It's like... God, okay. And attached a picture of an attractive woman. I knew it was BS and just replied with, you're not fooling anyone. Yeah, this is just like those spam bots you get in your email sometimes, you know. Oh, hot exotic women looking for you. You know, freaking mail order bride kind of stuff. It's that kind of vibe, but, but even weirder because it's so obvious it's not just a bot. The rest of the day, she gave me the cold shoulder and had an attitude. When called around, she said, if you were a real man, you wouldn't have even responded to the message. But 
But you did you didn't you know take the catfish though. You literally told him like this is weird, leave me alone. But but you should have ignored it. Like you ignored on the previous two social media platforms first. So obviously you were a real man on Facebook and Instagram, but you're not a real man on <laughs> Reddit because you don't have default blocker on or something. <laughs> what? Is she just genuinely upset because you rejected her catfish and she feels like she got rejected? Is is that is that why this upsettingness is happening? <laughs> this is so spicy. I handed her my phone and passcode and told her she can search anything. She did. She gave it back to me about an hour later. At this point, I asked, did you find what you were looking for while laughing? That is also like, oh, oh my god. Now she's accusing me of being gay. She didn't find any messages between me and other women. My search history is mostly about the shows I watch and recipes I want to cook. Also some medical questions about my pets. She said if I'm not seeking out other women, I must be gay. What, is she just is she just looking to live her life like a drama show? It's like, oh my god, you have to be hitting on other women because otherwise I don't have enough stuff to be upset about. So I'm gonna be upset about not having enough stuff to be upset about. And I'm gonna question your manhood and also conflate like manhood with, with sexuality, which is also kind of homophobic and toxic. Like, damn girl, really going at it, aren't we? What the heck am I supposed to do? I did nothing wrong and somehow I'm still the bad guy. She told me to leave my house the day before Christmas because she doesn't want to see me. Also called her family and said I am gay and now her brother wants to fight me? Oh yeah, her brother wants to wrestle you alone in the bedroom. Maybe maybe that kind of fight, you know, I I'd, don't I'd, I'd freaking know. Just reading between the lines here, fam. Update. Woke up to a bunch of texts. She apologized. I told her I'm done with this. I kind of had my mind made up last night, but for some reason writing it down felt therapeutic. Merry Christmas. Read it. I hope, yeah, I hope that means you broke it off. Because this kind of stuff is just creating issues out of nothing. If I put it this way, this sounds like it should be the least complicated time of your life, right? You've gotten to the point where you're an independent adult. You don't have kids yet. You don't have old parents. You're not dealing with any sickness. Like this is, how should I put it? The, the easiest time for a relationship, if that makes sense. Uh, ignoring the fact that people may not be mature or know what they want yet and yada yada. Life can still have hardships, obviously. But you know, you don't have kids to worry about. You don't have to worry about a mortgage, most likely. Nothing like that. You know, there's nothing tangible that should feed into this kind of attitude. But yet, she creates it. That means that the relationship is not meant to be, because imagine how bad it's gonna be once something, like, actually bad happens when there's a tangible problem. Probably not the person you wanna try to team up with against the world. Yikes. Fellas, is it gay not to want to cheat on your girlfriend? <laughs> Confirmed! I hope both of them go their separate ways and make the most of it. She realizes that she doesn't need to be overly paranoid about this kind of stuff and he finds someone who doesn't suss him out for no reason and tries to catfish him? That's so weird. I've never- I've never heard of that. What? My 17-year-old brother-in-law pretended I sent him nude photos. I'm sorry, English is not my first language. So, my husband and I got married five years ago. I get along well with his family, so I don't know where this situation came from. During Christmas dinner at my in-laws, my husband's little brother said he had something really important to say. We looked at his laptop, opened it, and it showed dozens of nudes. It was me in the pictures, but I never took the photos. I never took nude photos in my whole life. My brother-in-law said that he couldn't keep it any longer and they had to tell the family how degenerated I was. Okay, I think I know where this is going. My father-in-law started turning red. He was a very religious man, so those kind of things were a big no-no for him. I was trying to say that it was not true, but couldn't speak correctly. I was crying as I was trying to talk. My husband suddenly got up, went to his brother, and slapped him. He then started yelling that he knew it wasn't me in the photos. He explained that even if it was my head, most of my birthmarks were missing in the pictures. I have a lot of birthmarks on me. The only ones in the picture were the ones on my belly and the one near my elbow, but I have some others in other more personal areas, places that can only be seen when I'm naked. That was embarrassing to say. Only my husband and I are aware of these birthmarks. Well, that's a pretty solid receipt that the photos were faked. God, that is so nasty. Long story short, after my husband checked brother-in-law's computer, turns out brother-in-law and his friends photoshopped these pictures, but refused to explain why. Mother-in-law and father-in-law apologized profusely and confiscated brother-in-law's electronics. They also called his friend's parents to tell them what happened. Brother-in-law is not talking anymore. He just said that we ruined Christmas as father-in-law and mother-in-law sent back the game console they bought him for a Christmas present. Wait, hold on. Hold on. So you literally 
try to ruin a marriage. You also try to frame one person in the marriage who's like the new person to come to the family for sending nudes to a minor. This is what you try to frame. This is not an innocent prank. This is not someone else ruining Christmas. This is the kind of stuff that messes up people's entire lives. And you're, you're, you're pissy about a game console being sent back? My god, you should be lucky that you're not having a lawsuit against you for what you just did. This is so freaking bad. This is not prank level. This is illegal framing bullshit. And like 17 years old, sure, it's young, but you're not, you're not like 10. You know, it's not a small child that can't comprehend what they're doing. It's like, oh my god, I don't know why mommy and daddy are naked together. It's like, you, you know what's going on. You know the implications this kind of stuff has. You have that kind of experience and maturity about the world, even if it is a young age. So that is, that is not really an excuse either. Really, really gross. I hope it turns out well, and I hope this individual doesn't turn even more oddly resentful and make it personal because it feels like that kind of situation where this person was already willing to go really far and then take it personal when it backfired so be careful um, so they don't do anything else because this sounds really nasty really happy to hear that the husband was on their side though that 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 is just like Mwah. I'm so happy that you didn't have to face this alone, because this stuff is absolutely horrible. Ladies, lasses, and lassos, I do hope you enjoyed this video and that we learned something together about this weird, wacky world we live in and the wholesomeness and complete degeneracy that makes up humanity. Oh, glory. Have an amazing rest of your day, you beautiful beans, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Mwah.